Butsudo, The Buddhist Truth, by Ehe Dogen, from Shobo Genzo, The Treasury of the True Dharma I. The Eternal Buddha Soke on one occasion preaches to the assembly. From Eno to the seven Buddhas, there are forty patriarchs. When we investigate these words, from the seven Buddhas to Eno are forty Buddhas. When we count the Buddhas and the Patriarchs, we count them like this. When we count them like this, the seven Buddhas are seven Patriarchs, and the thirty-three Patriarchs are thirty-three Buddhas. Soke's intention is like this. This is the right and traditional instruction of the Buddha. Only the rightful successors of the authentic transmission have received the authentic transmission of this counting method. From Shakyamuni Buddha to Soke, there are 34 patriarchs. Each of the transmissions between these Buddhist patriarchs is like Kasyapa meeting the Tathagata and like the Tathagata getting Kasyapa. Just as Shakyamuni Buddha learns in practice under Kasyapa Buddha, each teacher and disciple exists in the present. Therefore, the right Dharma I treasury has been personally transmitted from rightful successor to rightful successor, and the true life of the Buddha Dharma is nothing other than this authentic transmission. The Buddha Dharma, because it is authentically transmitted like this, is perfectly legitimate in its transmission. This being so, the virtues and the pivotal essence of the Buddha's truth have been faultlessly provided. They have been transmitted from India in the West to the Eastern lands a hundred thousand and eight miles, and they have been transmitted from the time when the Buddha was in the world until today more than 2,000 years. People who do not learn this truth in practice speak randomly and mistakenly. They randomly call the right Dharma I treasury and the fine mind of Nirvana that have been authentically transmitted by the Buddhist patriarchs, the Zen sect. They call the ancestral master the Zen Patriarch. They call practitioners Zen students or students of Dhyana, and some of them call themselves the Zen schools. These are all twigs and leaves rooted in a distorted view. Those who randomly call themselves by the name Zen sect which has never existed in India, in the West, or in the Eastern lands, from the past to the present, are demons out to destroy the Buddha's truth. They are the Buddhist patriarch's uninvited enemies. Sekimon's Rinkan Roku says, Bodhidharma, first went from the land of the Liang dynasty to the land of the Wei dynasty. He passed along the foot of Suzan Mountain and rested his staff at Shurin Temple. He just sat in stillness facing the wall, and only that. He was not learning Zen meditation. He continued this for a long time, but no one could understand the reason, 
and so they saw Bodhidharma as training in Zen meditation. Now, dhyana is only one of many practices. How could it be all there was to the saint? Yet on the basis of this misunderstanding, the chroniclers of that time subsequently listed him among those who were learning Zen meditation. They grouped him alongside people like withered trees and dead ash. Nevertheless, the saint did not stop at Dhyana, and at the same time, of course, he did not go against Dhyana. Just as the art of divination emerges from yin and yang, without going against yin and yang. Calling him the 28th Patriarch is on the basis that the great Maha Kasyapa is the first Patriarch. Counting from Vipassian Buddha, he is the 35th patriarch. The seven Buddhas and twenty-eight patriarchs' experience of the truth should not necessarily be limited to dhyana. Therefore the master of the past says, dhyana is only one of many practices. How could it be all there was to the saint? This master of the past has seen a little of people and has entered the inner sanctum of the ancestral patriarchs, and so he has these words. Throughout the great kingdom of Sung these days, such a person might be difficult to find and might hardly exist at all. Even if the important thing is Dhyana, we should never use the name Zen sect. Still more, Dhyana is never the whole importance of the Buddha Dharma. Those who nevertheless willfully call the great truth that is authentically transmitted from Buddha to Buddha, the Zen sect, have never seen the Buddha's truth even in a dream, have never heard it even in a dream, and have never received its transmission even in a dream. Do not concede that the Buddha Dharma might even exist among people who claim to be the Zen sect. Who has invented the name Zen sect? None of the Buddhas and ancestral masters has ever used the name Zen sect. Remember, the name Zen sect has been devised by demons and devils. People who have called themselves a name used by demons and devils may themselves be a band of demons. They are not the children and grandchildren of the Buddhist patriarchs. The World Honoured One Before an assembly of millions on Vulture Peak Picks up an Udambara flower and winks The assembly is totally silent Only the face of the venerable Mahakasyapa breaks into a smile. The world honoured one says, I have the right Dharma eye treasury and the fine mind of Nirvana. Along with the Sangati robe, I transmit them to Maha Kasyapa. The world honoured one's transmission to the great Maha Kasyapa is I have the right Dharma eye treasury and the fine mind of Nirvana. In addition to this, there is no 
I have the Zen sect and I transmit it to Maha Kasyapa. He says, along with the Sangati robe. He does not say, along with the Zen sect. Thus, the name Zen sect is never heard while the world honoured one is in the world. The first patriarch at that time addresses the second patriarch. The Buddha's supreme and fine truth is to persevere for vast kalpas in difficult conduct and painful conduct and be able to endure what is hard to endure. How can one hope to seek the true vehicle with small virtue and small wisdom, and with a trivial and conceited mind. On another occasion, he says, the Dharma seal of the Buddhas is not got from other people. And on another occasion, he says, the Tathagata transmitted the right Dharma eye treasury to the great Maha Kasyapa. What has been indicated now is the supreme and fine truth of the Buddhas, the right Dharma eye treasury and the Dharma seal of the Buddhas. At this time, there has been no instance at all of using the name Zen sect and no cause of or condition for using the name Zen sect has ever been heard. This right Dharma eye treasury has been passed on in the face-to-face -face transmission by the raising of an eyebrow and the winking of an eye. It has been given with body, mind, bones and marrow it has been received with body, mind, bones and marrow. It has been transmitted and received before the body and after the body. It has been transmitted and received on the mind and outside of mind. The name Zen sect is not heard in the order of the world honoured one and Mahakasyapa. The name Zen sect is not heard in the order of the first patriarch and the second patriarch. The name Zen sect is not heard in the order of the fifth patriarch and the sixth patriarch. And the name Zen sect is not heard in the orders of Seigen and Nangaku. There is nothing to indicate who began using the name and from what time. People out to destroy the Dharma and to steal the Dharma, who could be numbered as practitioners even though they were among practitioners, may have secretly initiated the name. If practitioners of later ages randomly use the name that Buddhist patriarchs have never permitted, they will corrupt the lineage of the Buddhist patriarchs. Further, there will appear to be another method called the Zen sect, besides the method of the Buddhas and the patriarchs. If there is any method which is other than the truth of the Buddhist patriarchs, it may be a method of non-Buddhists. As already the grandchildren and children of Buddhist patriarchs, we should learn in practice the bones, marrow and facial features of the Buddhist patriarchs. We have devoted ourselves to the Buddhist patriarch's truth. We should not flee from this place and learn non-Buddhism.
Buddhism. We have retained the rarely retained body-mind of a human being. This is by virtue of pursuing the truth in the past. If, having received this benevolent influence, we mistakenly promote non-Buddhism, we will not be repaying the benevolence of the Buddhist patriarchs. In Great Sung, China, in recent ages, common folk throughout the country have heard this wrong name, Zen sect, and so the vulgar use the wrong names, Zen sect, Bodhidharma sect, and Buddha's mind sect rumours of which vie to be heard and to disturb the Buddha's truth. These names are the confused expressions of people who have never known the great truth of the Buddhist patriarchs and who neither perceive nor believe that the right Dharma I treasury even exists. How could anyone who knows the right Dharma I treasury call the Buddha's truth by a wrong name? For this reason, great master Musai of Sakito An Temple on Nagaku Zan Mountain, in formal preaching in the Dharma Hall, addresses the assembly as follows. My Dharma gate has been transmitted and received from past Buddhas. It is, without discussing the balanced state of Zen or diligence, solely to master the wisdom of the Buddha. Remember, Buddhist patriarchs who possess the authentic transmission from the seven Buddhas, and the many Buddhas speak like this. The only words realised are that my Dharma gate has been transmitted and received from past Buddhas. There is no realisation of the words my Zen sect has been transmitted and received from past Buddhas. Without distinguishing separate instances of the balanced state of Zen and diligence, he causes us solely to master the wisdom of the Buddha. That which he has solely mastered without spurning the balanced state of Zen and diligence is the wisdom of the Buddha. This is expressed as, I possess the right Dharma I treasury, and I transmit it. Sekito's my is the Buddha's I possess. The Dharma gate is the right Dharma. My, my possession and my marrow are the transmission which you have got. Great Master Muse is a disciple of the founding patriarch Sagan, the only one to have entered Sagan's inner sanctum. And he is the Dharma child of the eternal Buddha Soke, who shaved his head. So the eternal Buddha Soke is his forefather and his father, and the founding patriarch Sagen is his elder brother and his teacher. As a hero in the truth of the Buddha and in the order of the patriarchs, great master Musai of Sakitoan Temple stands alone. Only Musai has solely mastered the authentic transmission of the Buddha's truth. Every fruition 
and every element of the realization of his words is the timelessness of an eternal Buddha and the everlasting presentness of an eternal Buddha. We should see him as the eye of the right Dharma eye treasury and we should not compare him with others. That people who do not know compare him with Daijaku of Kose is wrong. So remember, the Buddha's truth transmitted and received from past Buddhas is not even called the balanced state of Zen. How much less could it be called or discussed as the Zen sect? Clearly remember, to call it the Zen sect is the most enormous error. Inept people, thinking that the Buddha's truth might be like a materialist sect or an immaterialist sect, regret that unless a name is given to a sect, it is as if there is nothing to learn. The Buddha's truth cannot be like that. We should be absolutely certain that the Buddha's truth has never been called the Zen sect. Nevertheless, the common folk of recent ages, in their stupidity, do not know the old customs, and people who have not received the transmission of past Buddhas wrongly say, Within the Buddha Dharma, there are the lineages and customs of the five sects. This is a degeneration that has been left to follow its natural course. There has not been one person, nor half a person, to redeem it. My late master Tendo, the eternal Buddha, is the first to have shown pity for this situation. This is his mission as a human being, and it is his mastery of the Dharma. My late master, the eternal Buddha, in formal preaching in the Dharma Hall, addresses the assembly as follows that individuals today talk solely of there being differences in the customs of the lineages of Unmon, Hogen, Ikkyo, Rinzai, Soto, and so on, is not the Buddha Dharma, and is not the truth of the ancestral master. The realisation of these words is hard to meet once in a thousand years, for only my late master expresses it, and is hard to hear through the ten directions, for only his consummate order hears it. This being so, among one thousand monks there is no listening ear and no seeing eye. How much less is there any who listens with the whole mind, and how much less is there any who listens with the body? Even if they listened with their whole body-mind, for hundreds of millions of myriad kalpas, they could never utilise the thoroughly realised body-mind of my late master to listen, to experience, to believe and to get free. It is pitiful that everyone throughout the ten directions of the great kingdom of Sung has considered my master to be on a par with the old veterans of other districts. Should we see the people who think like this as equipped with eyes, or should we see them as not equipped with eyes? Again, some have considered my late master to be on a par with Rinzai and Tokuzan. It must be said that these people have never seen my late master 
and never met with Rinzai. Before I performed prostrations to my late master, the Eternal Buddha, I had intended to investigate the profound teachings of the five sects, but after performing prostrations to my late master, the Eternal Buddha, I clearly knew the principle that the five sects are random names. That being so, when the Buddha Dharma flourished in the great kingdom of Sung, there were no names of five sects. There was never an ancient who proclaimed the names of five sects or who mentioned sectarian customs. Since the Buddha Dharma has weakened, the names of five sects have occurred at random. The situation is like this because people are negligent in learning in practice and not keen in pursuing the truth. To each individual monk who pursues real mastery in practice, I issue a stern warning. Do not retain the random names of the five sects and do not retain any concept of lineages or customs belonging to the five sects. How much less should there be the three kinds of profundity, the three pivots, the four thoughts, the four relations between reflection and action, the nine standards, and so on. How much less should there be the three phrases, the five relative positions, and the ten kinds of shared true wisdom? The truth of old master Shakyamuni is not small thinking like that, and it does not esteem thinking like that as great. The words have never been realised. They have not been heard at Shorin Temple or on Soke Mountain. It is pitiful that they are repeated by shavelings who, in the present degenerate age, do not hear the Dharma, their body, mind and eyes being dark. The children and grandchildren of the Buddhist patriarchs and their embryos must not express such words. Masters who abide in and retain the state of Buddhist patriarchs have never let these words of madness be heard. Recent second-rate teachers, people who have never heard the whole truth of the Buddha Dharma, who lack complete devotion to the truth of the patriarchs and who are ignorant in regard to their own state, being excessively proud of one or two mere trifles, establish names of sects like those mentioned earlier. Once the names of sects are established, small children because they have not learned the way to pursue the substance, vainly follow the shadow. They do not have the spirit which adores the ancients. They have behaviour which is corrupted by secular customs. Even secular people, born of the vileness of following the secular customs of the world, the king, Buno, asks the minister, Tycho, Why is it that though a lord endeavours to employ sages, he does not reap the benefit, but social disorder gets more and more extreme, putting the nation in peril? Tycho says, He employs sages, but does not use them. So although he employs wise advisers in name, he does not get the real effect of their wisdom. Buno says, Where does the fault lie? Tycho says, The fault is in the Lord's fondness for using those who are praised by the world 
instead of obtaining for himself true sages. Buno says, What does it mean to like to use those who are praised by the world? Tycho says, To like to listen to those who are praised by the world is to think the unwise wise, to think the unintelligent intelligent, to think the disloyal loyal, and to think the untrustworthy trustworthy. If the Lord sees those who are praised by the world as wise and intelligent, and see those who are reviled by the world as unworthy, People who have many accomplices will advance, and people who have few accomplices will recede. Thus, when the false band together and block out the wise, loyal retainers die having committed no crime, and false retainers use empty reputations to seek court rank. For these reasons, social disorder becomes more and more extreme, and so the nation cannot escape peril. Even secular people regret it when their nation and their principles are in peril, when the Buddha Dharma and the Buddha's truth are in peril, the Buddha's disciples must inevitably regret it. The cause of peril is arbitrary, following of the customs of the world. When we listen to the praises of the world, we do not find true sages. If we want to find true sages, we should adopt a strategy of wisdom that illuminates the past and looks into the future. Those who are praised by the world are not always wise and not always sacred. Those who are reviled by secular people are not always wise and not always sacred. Observing three times the case in which the wise invite vilification and the case in which the false are praised, we should not confuse those cases. Not to use the wise is the nation's loss, and to use the unworthy is a matter for the nation's regret. The present establishment of the names of five sects is an aberration of the secular world. Those who follow the customs of this secular world are many, but those who have understood the secular as the secular are few. We should see those who reform the secular as saints. To follow the secular may be the utmost foolishness. How could people who are willing to follow the secular know the Buddha's right Dharma? How could they become Buddhas and become patriarchs? The Buddha Dharma has been received by rightful successor from rightful successor since the seven Buddhas. How could this be similar to the establishment of the five versions of the Vinaya by people in India whose understanding depended upon sentences. So remember, the ancestral masters who made the right life of the Buddha Dharma into their own right lives have never said that there are five sects. Someone who learns that there are five sects in Buddhism is not an authentic successor of the seven Buddhas. My late master addresses the assembly. In recent years, the truth of the patriarchs has degenerated. 
Bands of demons and animals are many. They frequently discuss the lineages and customs of five sects. It is very distressing, very distressing. Thus, clearly, the 28 generations of India in the West and the 22 patriarchs of China in the East have never proclaimed five sects. All ancestral masters who are fit to be called ancestral masters are like this. Those who uphold the names of five sects, claiming that each sect has its own fundamental principle, are those who deceive and delude people of the world, and are those of scant knowledge and sparse understanding. If everyone in Buddhism established their own individual truth, how could the Buddha's truth have arrived at the present day? Mahakasyapa would have established one of his own, and Ananda would have established one of his own. If the principle of independent establishment were the right way, the Buddha Dharma would have died out in the early days in India. Who could venerate principles that individuals had established independently? Among principles that individuals had established independently, who could decide between the true and the false? If unable to decide between the true and the false, who could consider a principle to be the Buddha Dharma or not to be the Buddha Dharma? Without clarifying this truth, it is hard to call anything Buddhism. The names of the five sects were not established during the lifetimes of the respective ancestral masters. Since the deaths of the ancestral masters, who were called the ancestral masters of the five sects, flotsam in the stream of their lineages, people whose eyes were not clear and whose feet did not walk, without asking their fathers and going against their forefathers, have established the names. The principle is evident, and anyone can know it. Zen Master Dai En of Dai San Mountain is a disciple of Hyakujo Dai Chi, and he lives as Master of Isan Mountain at the time of Hyakujo, but he never says that the Buddha Dharma should be called the Igyo sect and Hyakujo does not say to Isan, From your time onwards, living as master of Isan Mountain, you should use the name Igyo Sect. Neither the master nor the patriarch uses the name, and so we should remember that it is a wrong name. And even though people arbitrarily use his name in the title of a sect, we should not necessarily single out Kyozan. If it were appropriate for Isan and Kyozan to call a sect by their own names, they would use their own names because it is not appropriate to use personal names. Personal names were not used in the past, and personal names are not used today. We do not speak of the Soke sect, the Nangaku sect, the Kose sect, or the Hyakujo sect. It was impossible for Isan, in his time, to differ from Soke, he could neither surpass Soke nor be equal to Soke, and the relation between Kyozan 
and one word or half a phrase spoken by Dai E is not always one staff being carried on the shoulders of two men. If people were going to establish the name of a sect, they should call it the Isan sect, or they should call it the Dai E sect. There has never been any reason to use the name Igyo sect. If it were appropriate to use the name Igyo sect, the name would have been used when the two venerable patriarchs were in the world. What obstacle was it that caused them not to use a name that they might have used when they were in the world? Those who go against the truth of their father and their forefather and use the name Igyo sect, which was not used when the two were in the world, are disloyal children and grandchildren. This name is neither the original hope of Zen Master Dai E, nor the original intention of old man Kyozan. It has no authentic transmission from a true master. The fact is evident that it is a wrong name used by a group of wrong people. Never let it be heard through the whole universe in ten directions. Great Master Aisho, abandoning a sutra lecturing school, became a disciple of Ubaku. He tasted Ubaku's staff on three occasions, receiving sixty strokes altogether, and realised the state of realisation while practising in Daigu's order. In the story, he is in residence as the master of Rinzai Inn Temple in Chinshu. Though not having perfectly realised Obaku's mind, he still never says one word, or says half a word, to the effect that the Buddha Dharma he has received should not be called the Rinzai sect. He does not say so, by holding up a fist, and does not say so by picking up a whisk. Nevertheless, flotsam among the members of his order, failing to preserve the conduct of their father, and failing to keep the Buddha Dharma, soon wrongly established the name Rinzai sect. If it had been contrived during the human life of great master Aisho, there would have been discussion to prevent the establishment of that name, because it clearly goes against the teaching of the ancestral patriarch himself. Moreover, as Rinzai is about to die, he entrusts the Dharma to Zen master Sancho Enen, saying, after my death, do not destroy my right Dharma eye treasury. Anen says, How could I dare to destroy the Master's right Dharma eye treasury? Rinzai says, If someone suddenly questions you, how will you answer? Anen at once lets out a yell. Rinzai says, Who is there that knows that my right Dharma eye treasury, which is passing towards this blind donkey, will be destroyed? The words spoken by master and disciple are like this. Rinzai never says, Do not destroy my Zen sect, never says, do not destroy my Rinzai sect, and never says, 
Do not destroy my sect. He only says, Do not destroy my right Dharma eye treasury. We should clearly remember that the great truth authentically transmitted from Buddha to Buddha must not be called the Zen sect, and it must not be called the Rinzai sect. We must never even dream of calling it the Zen sect. Though cessation is the essence and form of the right Dharma eye treasury, the transmission is passed on like this. Being destroyed as it passes towards a concrete blind donkey is truly the who knows state of the transmission. In Rinzai's lineage, Sancho is alone. We should neither associate with him nor align him with his elder and younger brothers in the Dharma. Truly his place is under a bright window. The story of Rinzai and Sancho is a story of Buddhist patriarchs. The Rinzai transmission today is the vulture peak transmission of olden days. Thus, the principle that we should not use the name Rinzai sect is evident. Great Master Kyoshin of Unmonzan Mountain practice in the past under the venerable patriarch Chin, and so he may have been a descendant of Obaku. Thereafter he succeeded Seppo, this master, Unmon, also does not say that the right Dharma I treasury should be called the Unmon sect. But members of this lineage also, not knowing that the wrong names Igyo sect and Rinzai sect are wrong names, have established the new name Unmon sect. If the fundamental intent of Great Master Kiyoshin aspired to a name that would establish a sect, then it would be difficult to affirm that he was the body-mind of the Buddha Dharma. When people now use the name of the sect, it is as if they are calling an emperor a peasant. Zen master Dai Hogan of Serio in Temple is the rightful successor of the master of Jizo in Temple and a Dharma grandchild of the master of Gensa in Temple. He possesses the fundamental teaching and is without wrongness. Dai Hogan is the master's title he uses when signing his name there is not one word in a thousand words, and not one saying in ten thousand sayings, in which he has advocated the establishment of the name Hogan sect, using his own title as a title for the right Dharma eye treasury. However, members of this lineage have established the name Hogan sect, if Hogan could influence the present, he would eradicate the speaking of the present wrong name, Hogan sect. Since Zen Master Hogan has passed away already, there is no one to cure this disease. Even thousands or tens of thousands of years hereafter, People who wish to be loyal disciples of Zen Master Hogan must refuse to treat this name Hogan sect as a name. That is to remain fundamentally loyal to Zen Master Dai Hogan. Broadly, the likes of Unman and Hogan 
are the distant descendants of the founding patriarch, Sagan. The bones of the truth have been transmitted, and the marrow of the Dharma has been transmitted to them. The founding patriarch, Great Master Gohan, received the Dharma from Ungan. Ungan was the rightful successor of Great Master Yakusan. Yakusan was the rightful successor of Great Master Sekito. Great Master Sekito was the founding patriarch Sagan's only son. There was no second or third to equal him. The conduct of the truth was authentically transmitted to him alone. That the right life of the Buddha's truth has survived in the eastern lands is by virtue of great master Sakito having faultlessly received the authentic transmission. The founding patriarch Sagan, at the time of the eternal Buddha Soke, taught on Sagan Mountain the teachings of Soke. To be asked to manifest himself in the world while Soke was in the world, and to experience manifestation in the world in that generation, he must have been a rightful successor above rightful successors, and a founding patriarch among founding patriarchs. It is not true that the better course is learning under one's master, and the inferior course is manifesting oneself in the world. But practitioners should take note that the average in those days would be outstanding today. When the eternal Buddha, Soke, was about to teach human beings and gods by manifesting his Pari Nirvana, Sakito, the story goes, steps up from his seat at the back and asks whom he should rely upon as a teacher. The eternal Buddha then says, Visit Gyoshi. He does not say, Visit Ajo. This being so, the eternal Buddha's right Dharma eye treasury is the authentic transmission of the founding patriarch, Sagan, alone. Although we acknowledge the excellent members of the order who attain the truth together with him, the founding patriarch walks alone as a truly excellent member. The eternal Buddha, Soke, has made his own child into Sagan's child, who is the father of the father of the father of the child Tozan, evidently had attained the marrow and evidently was the rightful successor of the ancestral patriarchs. Great Master Tozan, as the legitimate fourth generation heir of Sagan, has received the authentic transmission of the right Dharma eye treasury and has opened his eyes to the fine mind of Nirvana. Besides this, there is no separate transmission and no separate sect. The great master has never shown to the assembly any fist or wink of an eye that advocated the use of the name Soto sect. Furthermore, there was no flotsam mixed in among his disciples, and so there was no disciple who used the name Tozan sect. How much less could they speak of a Soto sect? The name Soto sect may be the result of including the name Sozan. In such a case, Ungo and Doan would have to be included too. 
Ongo is a guiding master in the human world and in the heavens above, and he is more venerable than Sozan. We can conclude, in regard to this name Soto, that some stinking skin bag, belonging to a side lineage, seeing himself as equal to Tozan, has devised the name Soto Sect. Truly, though the white sun is bright, it is as if floating clouds are obscuring it from below. My late master says, Now there are many who ascend the lion seats of many districts, and many who act as teachers of human beings as gods, but there is no one at all who knows the truths of the Buddha Dharma. Therefore, those who vie to uphold a sect among the five sects, and who remain wrongly stuck in words among sayings and words, are really the enemies of the Buddhist patriarchs. In another case, a school has been named after Zen master Nan of Oryu, and has begun to be called the Oryu sect. But before long, that school will know their wrongness. In general, while the world-honoured one was in the world, he never named a Buddha sect, nor named a Vulture Peak sect, nor spoke of a Jetavana Park sect. Nor spoke of a My Mind sect, nor spoke of a Buddha's mind sect. In which of the Buddha's words is a Buddha sect named? For what reason today do people use the name Buddha's mind sect? Why should the world-honoured one necessarily call the mind a sect? And why should a sect inevitably be related to the mind? If there is a Buddha's mind sect, there should be a Buddha's body sect, there should be a Buddha's eye sect, there should be a Buddha's ear sect, there should be sects for the Buddha's nose, tongue, and so on. There should be a Buddha's marrow sect, a Buddha's bone sect, a Buddha's leg sect, a Buddha's realm sect, and so on. Now, there are no such things. Remember, the name Buddha's mind sect is a false name. When Shakyamuni Buddha cites that all dharmas through the whole of the Buddha lands in ten directions are real form, and when he preaches the whole of the Buddha lands in ten directions, he does not preach that in the Buddha lands in ten directions, he has established some sect. If the naming of sects were the method of Buddhist patriarchs, it would have taken place in the Buddha's reign. If it had taken place in the Buddha's reign, the Buddha would have preached it. The Buddha did not preach it. Clearly, it was not a tool in the reign of the Buddha. The patriarchs do not speak of it. Clearly, it is not a utensil in the domain of the patriarchs. You might not only be laughed at by others, but also thwarted by the Buddhas, and even laughed at by yourselves. So please, do not give names to sects, and do not say that there are five sects in the Buddha Dharma. Latterly, 
there has been an infantile man named Chizo, who made a collection of one or two sayings of ancestral masters and described the five sects. He called this collection Eyes of Human Beings and Gods. People have not recognised it for what it is. Beginners and late learners have thought it to be true, and there are even some who carry it hidden in their clothes. It is not the eyes of human beings and gods. It darkens the eyes of human beings and gods. How could it have the virtue of blinding the right Dharma eye treasury? The aforementioned Eyes of Human Beings and Gods was edited by veteran monk Chiso at Manenji Temple on Tendai Zan Mountain in around the twelfth lunar month of the sixth year of the Junki era. Even a work produced latterly, if its words are true, should be approved. But this work is deranged and stupid. It has no eyes of learning in practice, and no eyes of a journey on foot. How much less could it have the eyes of meeting Buddhist patriarchs? We should not use it. We should not call the author Chizo, which means wise and clear. We should call him Gumo, stupid and dark. One who does not know a true person, and who does not meet a person, has gathered together sayings without picking up the sayings of people who are true people. It is clear that he does not know a person. The cause of the students of the teaching in China using the name of sects was the presence of masters of this and that lineage who could rival each other. Now the transmission of the Buddhist patriarch's right Dharma eye treasury has passed from rightful successor to rightful successor, with whom there can be no rival. There are no other masters of this and that lineage who might be included in the same class. Even so, unreliable old veterans today constantly use the names of sects at random. Scheming in their own interests, they are not in awe of the Buddha's truth. The Buddha's truth is not your own Buddha's truth. It is the Buddha's truth of the Buddhist patriarchs, and it is the Buddha's truth of the Buddha's truth. The minister Taiko says to King Buno, the whole country is not the whole country of one person. It is the whole country of the whole country. Thus, even a layman has this wisdom and has these words. Children in the house of the Buddhist patriarchs must not arbitrarily allow the great truth of the Buddhist patriarchs to follow the stupid and the dark by calling themselves a sect. That is a great violation, and one who commits it is not a person of the Buddha's truth. If we should call ourselves by the name of a sect, the world-honoured one himself would have used the name. Given that the world-honoured one did not name his own sect. What reason could we have as his descendants to use names after his death? What person could be more skilful than the world-honoured one? Those without skilfulness are likely to produce no benefit.
Again, given that the Buddhist patriarchs have not contravened the time-honoured truth by establishing their own sects, who among the Buddha's descendants could see their own sect as a sect? Learn in practice by illuminating the past and reflecting the present. Do not be arbitrary. Hoping not to differ one jot from the world-honoured one when he was in the world, his bereaved disciples solely have in their mind the regret of not being able to achieve or the joy of having achieved and the desire not to go against even a millionth of his teaching. Thus, we should vow to find him and to serve him in many lives. Thus, we should desire to meet Buddha and to hear the Dharma in many lives. Those who would deliberately go against the teaching of the world-honoured one when he was in the world and establish the name of a sect, are neither the disciples of the Tathagata, nor the descendants of the ancestral masters. Their sin is heavier than the heavy, and the deadly sins. By rashly disregarding the importance of the Tathagata's supreme truth of Bodhi, and by acting only in the selfish interests of their own sect, they make light of their predecessors and go against the predecessors. We can say that they do not even know the predecessors, and they do not believe in the virtues that were present in the world-honoured one's day. The Buddha Dharma cannot abide in their houses. In conclusion, if you want to receive the authentic transmission of the conduct of the truth as one who follows the Buddha, do not see or hear the names of sects, that which every Buddha and every patriarch transmits and authentically receives is the right Dharma eye treasury and the supreme truth of Bodhi. The Dharma that the Buddhist patriarch possessed has been transmitted in its entirety by Buddhas, and there are no innovations to be added to the Dharma at all. This principle is the bones of the Dharma and the marrow of the truth. preached to the assembly at Kipoji Temple in the Yoshida district of Fukui Prefecture on the 16th day of the ninth lunar month in the first year of Kangen. <laughs>